Welcome to episode six of the virtual workshops for Open Form containers at PAUSE. Today's episode is titled Advanced Scripts for Post Processing of Overlay FS. And it will be presented by Alexis Espinosa, who is a supercomputing application specialist at the PAUSE Supercomputing Center. Over to you, Alexis. Okay. Hello, everyone. So uh, now we are going to be presenting the last, well, episode six. Possibly there we are going to be adding more episodes, but so far this is the last episode we have. Um, so this is episode six. Um, the purpose of this um, episode is just to expand a bit more from episode five. So in episode five, we, um, uh, let me show you the, the list of episodes we have for the Open Form Containers workshop. So in episode five, what we did was to use the overlay FS virtual file system to save our results uh, in inside. So the idea is that for versions of OpenFOAM that do not have the capabilities of using this collated uh, IO, which means merging the result files into a reduced number of directories, then we, we may need to use OverlayFS virtual file system to save our, our results inside. Um, so that is for older versions of OpenFOAM or different uh, flavors of OpenFOAM that do not have the collated capabilities. Um, the main problem that I have seen with this, main problem in terms of, um, of the managing of your results, not, not really a, a, a real problem with the solution or whatever, is um, how now that I have the results in the overlay FS files, how can I uh, post process them? Because the results there are going to be uh, segregated into different directories because the results are decomposed. So basically, how can I reconstruct them? And because of the impossibility of <clears throat> observing several overlay files by a single um, singularity container. The only way I have found so far is to extract the results from the overlays and put them back into the host file system. So let me, and so far in this, in episode five, what we did was to extract a single result the last time we have available. And that was easy, but what if we want to extract all of them? So it's gonna be a pain to extract one by one. So that's the purpose of episode six, which has pretty much the same structure of scripts, but the scripts have been modified a little bit to handle multiple results at the same time. So it is, I, I'm calling it these advanced scripts. Uh, so they have been modified a little bit to, to be able to do that. So how, so um, I'm calling this uh, process, the post-processing results in batches. So um, the workflow that we are going to present here is pretty much the same as last episode. The main difference is that um, the reconstruction of results from the overlay can handle many times in the same script. All these times um, are going to be reconstructed. Um, yeah, but not all the times are going to be extracted at the same time. So the extraction is going to be is going to be in this case ten times each each batch. So I'm calling this extraction in, in groups of ten batches, batches of a small size. Um, and the idea is that once you extract the results from the overlays, 
then you reconstruct them and then all the uh, decomposed results that now exist in the host file system are going to be deleted and then extract and, and a second batch, etc. So the amount of files in the host file system is never going to grow. Um, the other difference with respect to the episode five scripts is that now we are using some functions in the scripts. Some own made functions in bash, bash functions. And these functions have been defined in the files that now exist in the auxiliary scripts. So the idea is that <clears throat> in a real uh, production run for you guys, you will need to have these functions saved in a specific directory and then call them from the scripts that you are using to, to do all the open phone process. Okay, so for this episode, we will need to follow these first instructions, which are, I'm currently in um, Scratch and I already downloaded the scripts from the Git repo. So I'm going to cd into the containers uh, workshop scripts directory. And there are the several episodes for this workshop. And then I'm going to move into the sixth episode, 06 tab. And if I ls, you will see now that we have a directory for the example and these auxiliary scripts. So if I ls the content of the auxiliary scripts directory, you will see there the file that contains all these functions. I will not describe too much about these functions, but we can uh, just take a super quick look that file. So that file, I'm going to go to the top of the file. So it's a bash script and has one by one all the functions that are being uh, defined with a lot of comments trying to be clear for you guys to understand what this function is doing, what are the arguments, and then the body of the function below. Then some separation marks um, for easy reading of the file and then the next function, uh, explanation, explanation of the arguments, etc., and the body of the function, etc. So, um, that's for you guys to explore. Now I'm going to move to the example directory. This example is going to work with OpenFOAM version 2.4.x, which doesn't have the capabilities of collating the results. And <clears throat> here is now, if I can say, our typical structure for the scripts, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, R, the steps in a typical workflow of open form. So let me go back to the presentation. So we have an explanation here of what each script does. First script has already been executed for you guys. So the Git repo already contains the, the, the example that has been extracted from the um, examples that come with um, open form. And then we will need to decompose, set up the overlay file systems, run the case, and reconstruct. So that's what we are going to do. F and G are going to be left for you guys to, to try them and explore them. Um, there are some other files, the case settings, foam, and the image setting singularity. 
as for episode five, these are pretty much the same files. So basically all the, all the workflow scripts call these scripts to do the settings either for singular, singularity or for uh, open form uh, common settings for all the scripts. Okay, and the last script is a script that contains the functions and that is there in the auxiliary scripts directory. Okay, so first step is already done. <clears throat> Next step is the decomposition. So I will I will flow quickly through all these steps and then uh, describe a, with more detail the step for reconstruction, which is really the main difference from the previous episode. So in a normal live workshop, we will have a reservation. But in this case, I don't have any reservation. So I will I will work, if I do S info, if I, if I execute the S info command, I can, I will check how the debug queue is um, at this point in SUS. So I see that the book queue has four idle nodes. So that should be enough to run uh, the examples I want to run. So I will be working uh, on the debug queue. So instead of using a reservation, I'm going to change this part to execute the commands in the debug queue. So for the decomposition, I will do a spatch, then dash p for the partition, debug queue, so I will be using the debug queue for running the scripts, and then b dot tab will complete the name of the script. So that script is has been submitted to the queue. So that will do the decomposition of the case. Um, I can check the status of You, the user, so nothing is there. So the job has been finished already. I got this LORM output here. I can quickly check. Let's run tab channel. And we see that the structure down there where the case directory is already has the decomposition. Again, remember that this is again the channel 395 tutorial from OpenFOAM, but in previous versions of OpenFOAM, that tutorial was set to use five, uh, five uh, subdomains, different from the first episodes for the same tutorial. For recent, a recent version of OpenFOAM, which was using only four subdomains, but in this case it is using five. Anyway, so that is decomposed. Then um, the next is set the overlay foam. So I will do exactly the same. So I'm looking for the previous command with my hop arrow and I will change the script to c dot tab that completes the name. So now I'm going to execute the setup of the overlay files. So that's the has been submitted. I can check. Well, I can find that command with the hop arrow. So that is running. So it is the 617 job ID. So I can tail dash F slurm 
the one seven. And I can see how this file is receiving the output of the script. So just to, to observe um, at runtime the status of the commands that are being executed. Okay, so create the overlays files and um, passing information from the decomposition to the interior of the overlays. And then the last step is to list the content inside the overlays for the processor zero um, directory. And it already has the part of the mesh and the initial conditions already transferred inside the overlay files. And then that script has a final message saying script done. So everything is fine. Control C to escape over to exit from the tail dash F command. We're back here. Everything is fine. We don't need um, any more the slurm output files and removing them. Now we need to run the case. So basically the same process. Batch to the debug queue now to run the execution. We can check again the status. It's running. There is a file with the output, so I can again tail dash f slurm. So here we see the output of the execution of open foam. This one uh, goes up to time 40 in the previous episode and examples the setup on the scripts was to um, limit the, the last time up to 10 but i let this one go up to 40 just to generate more results and uh, see better the um, the benefits of these new scripts that can handle the results in batches so uh, we i needed more results there just for the example. So um, again, script is done, control C to exit. And we can check what is there in the, in the case directory. So now what we have is uh, this structure, the processor zero, one, two, three, four directories do not exist anymore. Those have been renamed to back dot processor zero, back dot processor one, etc. So there, we only have the initial conditions. So let me move to to the case directory. Now I'm exactly in the case directory, and if I at least what is in the back processor zero, only the initial conditions. Then those initial conditions were sent inside the overlays. And then we created some um, soft links to look into the interior of the overlays and then execute the case using these links to look inside them. Um, then the singularity uh, processes we're able to write inside and things should be inside the overlays. So if you want to take a look what, to what is inside the overlays, we need to, <clears throat> to execute a, a singularity container uh, mounting the overlays. So let's do exactly the same as we have done in the past. So now the image equals group 
modularity policy repository outcome form 2.4.x dot uh, policy sieve. So that's the image I'm going to use to check. Um, module load singularity to, to be able to use singularity here at the command line. And now singularity sec um, I don't remember the name of the of the directory that was inside, but then let's do singularity run slash overlay overlay zero and the image. So what I'm doing here is to execute <clears throat> the container in a interactive mode. So now I'm inside the container and I remember that I put that directory in the root. So if I change to the root of the file system, I will see. Yeah, it's in, it's there. It's in overlay open foam. CD overlay open foam. Then there we have run. And then the name of the case, and then should be processor zero. So here are the results. So we have all the time directories for the results. We can move to time 40. We see there we have the all the result files <clears throat> for that time 40 for processor zero. Okay, so so this was the this is the directory I I didn't remember the name anyway. So now I exit. We could have done everything from the command line, like. Um, Singularity exec dash dash overlay a zero the image and then ls ls <clears throat> that directory. Overlay open form run a nine five or zero. Hmm. Yeah, the name processor zero. So there are the results. Okay, so next step is the reconstruction because here we don't have anything really in the host file system and we need to put the results inside all these back inside all these back processors, copy them here, do the reconstruction, then remove. After doing the reconstruction, all these results will appear in this uh, case directory, just as the time zero. We will going to see time point zero two, excuse me, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, etc., up to 40 after the end of the process or up to the time we have defined to to post process. So let me go back to the directory of the scripts. I'm going to remove 
that output because we don't need it anymore. So all these steps are detailed one by one in the in the tutorial notes. Um, so that was for the decomposition and then all the steps for the script C for creating the overlays and then all the steps for executing the solver. And then how to display <clears throat> and know that the results are inside and now the reconstruction. So as I told you, uh, we cannot mount more than one overlay file system, so we will not be able to see all the results needed for the reconstruction. <clears throat> so what we are doing is copy a small batch of results. Then, well, create soft links to look now instead that to the interior of the overlays, we are going to see to the interior of these back processor files, excuse me, directories. So um, OpenFoam will search for directories named processor zero, processor one, but those are now going to be links. So by accessing this link, it will access the back directory. Then reconstruct that, reconstruct that small batch, then remove the reconstructed times, and then continue the cycle until finished. So let's do it. So basically it is submit the job and then check what is happening. Mm. So then let's batch using again the debug queue. Let's batch the reconstruction script. So it is being submitted. Check the status. It is running. There is a script there showing the reconstruction. But instead of checking the output of that output file, I'm going to move into the case directory and observe what is inside the back processor any number. So I can do back processor Um, well, I can do this or and many times so we see that this is growing or I can use the command watch so if I use the command watch then that command will execute every two seconds the ls command and we can see how the times are being copied to the host file system, to the interior of, the, of these processor, back processor directories. Once we have the copy completed, the scripts are set to copy only 10 times in each batch. So once we have 10, then those um, times are reconstructed and then removed. And now the next copy starts. Um, so let's just wait for one more cycle. So this one then should go up to time six.
Okay, the copy has been done. The reconstruction should be working and then removing. As you see, well, for this small example, reconstruction takes not too much time. And now the next, next batch is happening. So control C to escape or to exit the watch command. And if we ls here in the case directory, now we see all the reconstructed times. And the script has been set up to reconstruct from time zero up to time 10. It's not going to reconstruct up to time 40. So then, then maybe, um, yeah. Uh, now let me come back to the scripts directories. So the scripts F and G do some kind of the same process. So script F just ex extract results from the overlays and does nothing else. Uh, script G reconstructs whatever has been extracted and is already present in the processor zero processor one, well, back processor zero, back processor one directories. So this is kind of the same process, but just one batch at the same time. But, uh, and these are, have been set up to post process times beyond times 10 up to times 40, I think but that's for you to, to check. But the main, main uh, script is this one to reconstruct at the same time uh, many, many batches. Um, one thing that the script is doing is once the time has been reconstructed, so for example, let's go move to time one. Oh, I already moved up here so let's move back to the case directory and if i cd into time one you will see all the files that have already been reconstructed but if i you do ls dash la it, this will uh, this a will uh, display also the hidden files and the script is creating one hidden file that is not part of the original open form structure. So this dummy file is being created just to mark this time as a time that has already been re reconstructed successfully. So any, if the script try, tries to, uh, or understands to reconstruct again times, time one, it will check the existence of this file. And if it's already there, then there's no need to make any reconstruction of that time and it will jump that. So now we can see a little bit of the script here. So the script for reconstructing, I put <clears throat> little pieces of it here. So the first bit is the this part of the S batch setting. And so if you remember, the case uses five um, decomposed domains. So this number in the case of the reconstruction script does not need to match the number of subdomains. It is basically how many cores you are going to be using for all these multiple copies. So four is a reasonable number, even for a large amount of subdomains, but um, you need to check how many uh, tasks you can use, possibly half of a node. I don't know, it all depends also in the amount of memory you need for the reconstruction. So if you need, I don't know, all the memory in the node for reconstructing your case, then you can use all the, the cores in the node for copying files. So you can move up to 28 tasks and use all the cores available. You will anyway be using the whole node for yourself while reconstructing because of the memory requirements. Okay, so the main thing I want to show you here is 
now uh, the setting for uh, for defining how how uh, which times to reconstruct is here in section four of the script. So here you see all these commented lines with different options. These are the syntax options that the scripts are prepared to work with. So you can list them one by one separated by comma or list a single time or use this minus one, which means the last time. And if you want, if you use minus five, then the last five times available or everything all the times <clears throat> or a range uh, using this syntax, which is uh, copied from the syntax that OpenFOAM uses anyway. But this is not OpenFOAM command. This is our own. Uh, this is going to be used by our own function. So only this syntax are, um, our function is prepared to work with. Then this function will use um or will generate an array with all the times to be reconstructed so this array is a going is a global variable for the for the script so the first thing i do is basically clear that array if it existed before just for um, safety and then call this function generate reconstruct array so this function will create again the a variable name array reconstruct and field with the times to be reconstructed. So if inside the overlays you have time only time zero, time five and time ten, then this array reconstruct will have that zero, five and ten. In this case we'll have zero, zero point two, zero point four, etc. up to ten. So it basically this general reconstruct array will go and see inside the overlays, check what times are available, and then generate the array <coughs> for this the next steps in the in the script. So this function receives two arguments. The first argument is basically what we are defining here which times are going to be reconstructed. The second argument is where the results are inside the overlays. So in this case, it was dash overlay open form run channel 395. That's it. And then basically is the directory where the processor zero, processor one, or processor two are without the processor part. So just the, the part of the path uh, before the processor zero, processor one, etc. And this function will generate the array and also give a, a value of success. And that value is being catched here and then is checked for success anyway. So after generating that reconstruction array, then that script, what it does is create the, the soft links to look into the back.processor directories. And again, in previous scripts, that was done explicitly inside the script. In this script, I'm using a function to do that. This function is called point to back. And is this is this was the other function. So this function is called point to back. And again, I'm checking for success. Then that script in the next section has defined how many files, well, excuse me, how many time directories are going to be processed in each patch. So that is defined by this function max time transfers from overlays and it is 10 by 10. Obviously that can be modified 
uh, for your own purposes. And then, um, again, there is a function that does the copy from the overlays to the host file system. I will not explain too much here. Pretty much the same idea. And then after, after the copy has been done, then execute the reconstruction uh, tool from OpenFOAM. So it is singularity exec, the image, the OpenFOAM image, reconstruct par, and then the syntax, the syntax for um, for open, open form itself, dash time, and then a time string that is being generated by the uh, script itself. So it is basically the list of the times that are going to be reconstructed in this batch, separated by commas. And open form understand that list, and that is the list that is being reconstructed. And then there is a section for checking if the reconstruction has been done properly that comes below this part that second that, that section basically takes a look into the log file for the reconstruction so any output for the reconstruction command is being saved in the logs directory that is also created by the script and then that checking section checks for each of the times reconstructed if there was a message of error or anything. And if there was, well, take care of it somehow. And sends you a message of uh, where the error was found. And basically, yeah, that's it. So in the instructions, basically it's the same that we did check with watch how it's growing, how it's finishing, and then check your um, working directory and check that all the reconstruction has been done up to time 10, from zero to 10, the times 10 must be somewhere here, yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Um, we are not going to um, do F and G here, the scripts are there for you if needed. So, yeah, once more, the key points is you cannot uh, mount more than one overlay file system. That is a restriction for the reconstruction process. So then what we do is uh, several steps to, to be able to reconstruct first, copy a small match of results into the back processor directories that are in the host file system, from the overlays to the host file system, then create soft links that allows OpenFOAM to take a look into the back.processor whatever directories, then reconstruct that batch, <clears throat> then delete everything that has been already reconstructed. And then, uh, well, obviously the reconstructed results, you keep them, but the decomposed results, you remove them. And then continue the cycle until you have post-processed all the files you need. Okay. So I think that is everything from my side. Okay, thank you, Alexis. And um, as mentioned by Alexis, you can get more information from the tutorial itself. So you can try it yourself as well as um, using the materials that are in the GitHub. Um, thank you very much and yeah. thank you for your time and attention.